Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem sequential digits. An integer is basically considered sequential if every single digit in that number is increasing by one every single time. So of course this is sequential. We start at one, then we go to two, then we go to three. So this number is 123 and it's considered sequential. It doesn't have to start at one though. For example, 234 is also considered sequential. The number of digits also does not matter. 23 is considered sequential. I guess technically two is also considered sequential, like any digit from one through nine would be, but if you take a look at the constraints, I guess none of those are gonna be applied because our problem statement tells us to generate all sequential digits between this range, low to high. And the constraint is that low will be always greater than or equal to 10, so it'll always be at least two digits. So let's take a look at this first example here. We want to check what are all the sequential digits between this range inclusive. The result is these two numbers, 123 and 234. Both of those lie within this range. So the most brute force approach would be to basically have a for loop between low to high. And for every single one of those numbers, somehow check if they are sequential. I guess that is theoretically possible because you can extract each digit from a number. You could go in reverse order, but that's not going to be very efficient. That's going to be, well, actually, it's going to be big O of N. Usually that's considered pretty efficient. And when I say big O of N, it's going to be between this range of numbers. And worst case, low will start at 10 and high could be a large number. Its maximum is going to be about a billion. So when we say big O of N, we're kind of bounding it based on what high happens to be. Usually this is pretty efficient, but intuitively it seems like there might be a better way because look at this large range. It doesn't have a lot of sequential numbers that go in between it. So what can we do? Well, I'm going to take you through my thought process, how I approached this. And using that solution, we can intuitively at least have a chance of coming up with a cleaner solution, even though both the solutions I'm going to show you are actually both going to be constant time solutions. So when I look at this, I notice something. The numbers that we generate have to be between four and five digits. Of course, no number with three digits is going to fall within this range because low is four digits, high is five digits. So we only have to look at numbers that are either four digits or five digits. Okay, so either something like this or something like this. The most important thing about a sequential number is the starting value because if I pick one as the starting value here, we have determined the number. There's only one possible number it could be, one, two, three, four. Had I started with a two, we've already determined the number, three, four, five. It has to increase by one each time. So the only thing we have to iterate over is one through nine. We have to consider one through nine being a starting value here. And then once we've done that, all we have to do is actually generate the number itself. So to brute force this in a smarter way, we can do it like this. We can generate all nine numbers. There's only gonna be nine possibilities that have four digits. And then we can generate all nine numbers that have five digits. And so really we only end up with 18 unique numbers. And for those 18 numbers, we only have to check, do they fall within this range? You can kind of tell that the number of digits isn't gonna be more than 10. So let's say we have 10 possibilities, like we have to consider it for the number with three digits, four digits, five digits, all the way up until 10. For each of those, the starting value can be one through nine. So then that's gonna be a multiplied by nine. And then to actually generate the number itself, let's say that's gonna be in the worst case 10 once again, this is still a constant number, right? It's 900 and in most cases, it's actually gonna be a lot less than that. Even this second 10 term is kind of misleading because most of them we're not gonna have to generate 10 digits. So this is the constant time solution I kind of came up with, though it's definitely not the cleanest one. So this is the code for that solution. To get the lower bound of the number of digits, I just convert the input into a string and then take the length of it. That's a convenient way to do it in Python, though you could do it using some math operations as well by using this number. Did the same thing for high, so now we have our range. We're going from low to high, 
And then once we know the number of digits, then we can go through every single starting value. And the reason I go from one through nine actually is because we don't really need to start at nine when you think about it, because the number that comes after nine is gonna be 10 and that doesn't count. So that's like the biggest edge case that I didn't really talk about, which is what happens if we're trying to generate a number with four digits and we actually start at nine. Well, then the next digit is gonna be 10 and that's not really allowed. Okay, what if we started at eight? Then the next digit is gonna be nine. Next is gonna be 10, that's also not allowed. What if we start at seven, then eight, then nine, then 10, not allowed. What if we start at six? then seven, then eight, then nine. So this is the largest digit that we can start with when we have a sequence of four numbers. The way I check that, instead of changing this, I just have an if statement here. If start plus the number of digits ends up being greater than 10, then we break. So in my case, I had six plus the number of digits was four. If that's greater than 10, which it's not, then we screwed up. But if it's equal to 10, that's fine. 6 plus 10 is equal to 10, which means we're fine to start with 6. Then I just keep track of the start value. I have it in number. To actually create that digit itself, I use the times 10 operation because if you have a number like 6, for example, and now I want to turn this into 67, how am I going to do it? Well, the easiest way is to turn 6 into 60 and then add 7. The times 10 is what allows us to turn it into a 60. Now that I have 60, I want to turn it into 678. I can turn it into 670 plus 8. That's exactly what I'm doing with this piece of code right here. And then finally, at the end, I check, is it within that range? If it is, append it to the result and return it. If you want to see the runtime on the left, you can see it is pretty damn efficient, but there is technically a slightly more efficient solution and a slightly cleaner solution, which also happens to be O of N. So it's not like more efficient in terms of big O of N. Let's get into that now. Let's take a look at the second example for a second. We can see we end up with multiple numbers starting with one, don't we? And if you were to really draw it out, let's just take one, two, three. We're trying to get all sequential numbers that have three digits. Next, we'd get two, three, four, three, four, five, five, six, seven. Well, I guess I skipped four, five, six, but you get the idea, right? Is there something you're kind of noticing about this? To go from here to here, we kind of just pop this guy and add this guy, don't we? Same thing going here, pop and go ahead and add this guy. That can kind of intuitively lead you to realize that all of these are really just a substring of this string right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I mean literally all of them, not just the ones of size three. Those are of course gonna be like this, but also the ones of size four, those are gonna be like this. Same thing with the ones of size five. It's kind of a sliding window, isn't it? And so we can use this idea to actually slightly improve the code I showed you just a second ago, but there's a slightly better solution than that too. And that involves using something called a queue data structure, first in, first out. First, we take our queue and we initialize it with all numbers from one through nine. The reason we're doing this is because we want all numbers with just a single digit. And these are technically sequential, even though we know none of these are actually gonna form a valid result. But this gives us a starting point. Using this one, we can form all numbers that start with one, all sequential numbers that start with one. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop one, we're gonna check, is it a valid number within our range? Let's say we're doing this example. It's not a valid number yet. So we don't add it to the result, but we know that it is less than low. So that's perfectly fine. Cause now we're gonna give this guy another chance. So what we're gonna do is consider the next larger number that starts with a one and it happens to be 12. And how am I gonna form that 12? Well, I'm gonna take one, multiply it by 10, give us 10 and then add the next number. And the way I'm gonna get the next number, which is two, is just by taking the previous digit and adding one to it. And that's the number we're gonna to add to the total. How am I gonna get the previous digit? Well, in general, we might be working with a number like this, one, two, three. And when I multiply that by 10, it's gonna become something like this. And when I wanna to add to it, I wanna add four. So before I do this operation, 
I take the original number, I mod it by 10, I get that guy three, and now I have three. I know that's the last digit. I wanna add one to three, and then I wanna take that four, and I wanna add it to the total. So that's how the math is gonna work. In terms of the overall picture here, we're gonna take this 12 now, and we're gonna add it to the end of the queue. As you can see, none of these are gonna be big enough that fall within this range. So we're gonna end up doing that for all of these. We're gonna end up getting something that looks like 12, 23, 34, 45, et cetera. I can't obviously draw out all of them. It's gonna take up a lot of space, but then all of these are gonna turn in. These are also not big enough, by the way. These are gonna turn into one, two, three, two, three, four, three, four, five. These are also not big enough. Once again, these are gonna become one, two, three, four, two, three, four, five, three, four, five, six. Finally, some numbers that are big enough. So then these are gonna be added to the result, as you can see, these numbers here. And we're gonna keep cycling through like that. Pop this, move it back after adding an extra digit. Pop this, move it back after adding an extra digit. At what point do we stop though? If I turn this into one, two, three, four, five, it's still actually falls within the range. But if I turn this into two, three, four, five, six, it's way too big now. It's larger than high. At that point, we'd pop this and we'd never add it again to the end of the queue. That's how you know we're not gonna do this forever. Okay, so this will work. This is a very clever way, a clean way to solve this problem. Now there's just one last thing here. Why am I using a queue? rather than just using a stack. Why did I want to pop from here and then push back there? There's actually one requirement in this problem. The numbers themselves actually have to be sorted. If you use a stack, the only problem is your answer is not gonna be in sorted order. It might end up starting with nine. Well, then you might say, just take these numbers and reverse them, store them like this, nine, eight, seven. That's not gonna work either because if you have a one here, you're gonna end up getting all numbers that start with one. Your answer for this problem is gonna put the one, two, three, four first, and then it's gonna put the one, two, three, four, five second, but that's not sorted order. Two, three, four, five should go first. So the queue is a clever way to do that. This solution is also constant time because we know that it's pretty much gonna be these nine numbers times like the max number of digits that we end up having, which is still gonna be constant. Now let's code it up. So I'm gonna go ahead and declare the result. That's what we're gonna return. We also want the queue. You could hard code it because it's not like a lot of code, but a nice way to do it is to get every number from one through nine Python has a range function. And actually we need to go from one to 10 if we actually want one through nine. This one is non-inclusive. And then we can convert this into Q by calling the deck constructor like this. And then let's go until the queue is empty. We know at some point it's gonna be empty because we'll pop every element. But to start with, we just pop from the left, queue.pop left. And I start with the terminating condition. If N is greater than high, at that point, don't push it back to the queue or don't append it to the queue and then just continue to the next iteration of the loop. If that's not the case though, well, next thing I wanna check is if N is valid. Is it within this range inclusive? And if it is, we know we can append it to the result. But our work isn't done yet. This is where the math starts, by the way. So I wanna get the ones place by taking N, modding it by 10. Next, I wanna check, and I guess this is the only thing I didn't mention in that previous drawing explanation, which is, Again, what if the ones place is nine? Well, by adding one to nine, we're gonna get 10. That's not a digit, right? 10 is not a digit, so that wouldn't work. So when we get here, we wanna check. As long as the ones place is less than nine, we can add one to it. And that's exactly what we do. We take ones plus one, add one to it, and we take n, multiply it by 10, and then we add these two guys together. This gives us the new number. If we have one, two, three right now, this is gonna give us 123 with an extra zero plus four. That's exactly what we want. So we take this and append it to the queue then. Once we're done with that, we have the entire code. Let's run it to make sure that it works. And it's pretty efficient. I guess this time it just happened to be less than the last one but I think technically this is slightly more efficient than the previous one. 
in terms of just the number of operations. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.